welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at another science skill, that of drawing graphs. For National 4 and National 5, you need to be able to draw two types of graphs, bar graphs and line graphs. Let's have a look at bar graphs to start. These are used for discontinuous variables. For example, those are ones which can be described as words, such as particle size. The requirements for a bar graph are that your independent variable or what you're changing goes on the x-axis. This will usually be the words. Your dependent variable, or what you're measuring, goes on the y-axis, and this will be numbers. The x and y-axis should have labels with units where appropriate, and they should have appropriate scales to fit the graph paper. For numerical values, these should go up in 1s, 2s, 5s, 10s, 20s, 25s, 50s, 100s or 1000s, whichever fits best. For your bars, they should be evenly sized and evenly spaced. For example, here is a bar graph. So here is our bar graph. As you can see, we have label for the x-axis. We have a label for the y-axis and units. There are no units for the particle size, but there are units for time. We have three different particle sizes with the bars evenly sized and spaced and then we have our scale on the y-axis going up in 20s. Pause the video now and try and draw a bar graph for the following data. Your bar graph should look like this. We have your label for the, the x-axis, it doesn't need any units. We have your label for the y-axis, which does need units. We have the four alcohols named and evenly spaced. And then up the y-axis, we have an even scale going up in 20s. We then have our four bars to the appropriate height. The second type of graph that you need to be able to draw is that of a line graph. This is used for continuous variables. Those are ones which are described with numbers, such as concentration or temperature. The requirements for a line graph are similar to a bar graph. Your independent variable of what you're changing needs to go on the x-axis. Your dependent variable of what you're measuring should go on the y-axis. Your x and y-axis needs labels and units where appropriate, and the scales should go up in the same sorts of numbers. You should then plot your points and join them with a line of best fit, which is either a straight or a curve. This does not need to go through all of the points, but should go through as many as possible. Here is an example of a line of best fit that is a curve. So here we have label for the x-axis and we have units for concentration. We have label for the y-axis and units for time. We have a scale going up in 20s. We have a scale going up in 2s. And here we have a curve that is best fit. To work out if you are going to have a curve or a straight line, you just have to lay a ruler over the points and if it goes in a straight line, it will go through most of the points. But as you can see here, if we were to try and put a ruler through these points, it wouldn't go through very many. So here we have a curve. Draw a line graph for the following data. So for this data here, we have a label for the x-axis with the appropriate units. We have a label for the y-axis with the appropriate units. Our scale on the x-axis goes up in 20s. Now in the data, we do not have a value for the 60 degrees temperature. However, you do need to include it in your scale as we're going up in 20s. We've then got the y-axis scale going up in 25s. We've then plotted the points for 0, 20, 40 and 80. 
we have no value for the 60. We then have a line of best fit which is straight. You can see that I have not joined from point to point. You need to have a straight line which goes through as many of the points as possible. Pause the video now and draw an appropriate graph for this data. So the data showed numbers versus numbers, therefore a line graph is appropriate. We have our label for the x-axis temperature with degrees C as the units, our label for the y-axis percentage yield with the percentage as the units. Our scale is going up in hundreds for the temperature and we're going up in tens for the percentage yield. We did not have a percentage yield for 300 degrees. However, to make sure our scale goes up evenly, we need to be able to put that in. We've then plotted the points for each of the temperatures, and again, we've not joined from point to point. We've joined them together with a smooth freehand curve. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for regular updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.